Let's pray first. Heavenly Father, I just ask you right now that you would anoint these words that are about to go forth, oh Lord. Lord, I ask that you would pour your Holy Spirit upon me, Lord. Lord, let me not speak any words that you don't want me to speak, Lord. Let it be your will and your words that go forth. Lord, I pray for this congregation that every heart be open and be ready to receive whatever it is that you have for them. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Yeah, so my message, the title of it is, It's Time to Occupy. And what happened was, I was on my way to work one day, and the Lord just spoke that to me. It's time to occupy. And at first, I didn't know what he was talking about, but as I sat with the Lord, it, we're going to focus on prayer. We're going to focus on um, our secret place. Everything that she just spoke is what this message is going to be about. So the Lord is definitely in the room. So I need to start with this. I've always had a burden for people like me, and I'm going to have to give you a little bit of testimony so you know what I'm talking about. I was in church for seven years. I grew up Catholic, all right? So I, I really never seen anybody reading the Bible. I, we went to catechism, but you had a workbook. It wasn't the Bible. And, um, and so I, we ended up in a Pentecostal church, and I went to church for seven years. I love church. I could worship with the best of them. I, I went to the altar, got on my knees. I, I, I love to serve. I'm, I have a gift of service. Anything that they needed, I would do. I was a good Christian. The problem is when I left church. When I left church, I did not read my Bible. I didn't. I thought that I had a relationship with Jesus because I went to church on Sunday and Wednesday and I worshiped him in church. My heart is for people who sit in church on a Wednesday and a Sunday and they think they're good. They think they have a relationship with Jesus because I honestly did. I didn't know. I would walk around the house and he Bobby has a, a calling on his life to preach. So he would be studying the Bible, but I thought that's what he was supposed to do. So that he can teach people like me that sit in church on a Wednesday and a Sunday. Right? That's what he was supposed to do. I, I honestly thought I didn't have to read the Bible. I honestly thought I, I had a, a relationship with Jesus. This is about as far as my relationship with Jesus went. Every morning for about three years, and I'm still in the same place. I haven't been filled with the Holy Spirit yet. I, this is probably about three or four years in. So seven years I was in this church thinking I was good with Jesus, right? For three years, I would wake up every morning, and on Facebook, I would say, Good morning, Jesus. Thank you for waking me up. It's going to be an amazing day. And then I would put the verse of the day. That was as much Bible reading as I got. The verse of the day and I'm still thinking I'm in good standing with Jesus I have a relationship with Jesus because I go to church in my mind in my mind I was putting these Bible verses the verse of the day so that them people that was on my Facebook you know the ones that didn't have a relationship with Jesus so that they would at least get some Bible verses you know that that's 365 Bible verses a year so I, I really thought I was doing good good as far as having a relationship with Jesus, all right? And so today at 3 o'clock, the Lord gave me something that I hadn't seen, and this is what he said. He did, I don't know if he used the word pitiful, but this is how pitiful I was. I thought those people that, you know, I was giving them, they didn't have a relationship with Jesus. I thought I had a relationship with Jesus because I went to church on Sunday and on Wednesday, and what he said was, you, this is what he said, he said, you were trying to get the speck out of their eye as you walked around with the log in yours all of this time. He said, you're no different than them people. The only thing you did was warm a seat on a Wednesday and a Sunday. You had no relationship with me. I didn't know if I wanted to cry or laugh, because it's true. And praise the Lord, he brought that to my attention today, and that's where my heart is, and that's where we're going. You've got to have a relationship with Jesus. I don't care what you do at church. I don't care if you come and you sit in the chair, and then you go teach the children. If you leave there, and you don't have a secret place, if you don't spend time with Jesus, if you don't know Jesus, you're not good. If you come up here, and you're on music ministry, and you come and you worship, and you're the best worshiper here, but you leave here, and you don't 
get into a secret place with Jesus, you're not good. You have to have the relationship with Jesus. And the relationship doesn't come from anything you do in this church house. Amen. It comes from being with Jesus. And I need to tell you this. It's the intimacy with Jesus. If there's, You have got to trust him. You've got to trust what he did. You have to trust the word. Come on. When you lose the trust, if there's no trust, there's no intimacy. In any relationship, when the trust is broken, so is the intimacy. That's right. Come on. Amen. You've got to get with God, and you've got to have a secret place. Okay. So he says it's time to occupy. Now let me get to my message. I had to give you all that testimony. That's where my heart is. I don't want you to stay seven years without, or, or longer, without getting that relationship, without getting into the secret place, without... Pouring your heart out to Jesus without knowing him, having the relationship, the personal relationship. So this, but this is the message. It's, he's saying that it's time for us to occupy. What does it mean to occupy? Right now we're occupying Crossway Ministry. I'm occupying the pulpit. You're occupying the chair that you're sitting in. We have to stand up. We have to occupy for the kingdom of God. We've got to stand against what's coming. This is what he said. He spoke this to me a while back. We are not prepared for what's coming. Even the people who think they're prepared for what's coming, you're not prepared for what's coming. You're going to have to be able to get a hold of God for yourself. The pastor can't get a hold to him for you. Your wife can't get a hold to him for you. Your husband can't get a hold to him for you. You will have to know how to get God for yourself. You're going to have to know how to talk to him, and you better be able to hear him talk back. You've got to be able to listen, and you've got to be able to hear him talk back. Okay. So what is it to occupy, to fill up a uh, space or to, uh, do you don't know. All right. So the Lord, the Lord has given us territory and he's given us dominion. In Genesis 1, verse 26 to 28, I'm just going to summarize it. Um, so this is where he said, let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the cattle and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Then he said, he made male and he made female. But then what he said, he blessed them and he said, be fruitful and multiply. He said, fill the earth and subdue it. Male and female, fill the earth and subdue it. What does it mean to subdue it? To conquer it, to bring it into subjection of what? Of the will of God, the word of God, the kingdom of God. Fill the earth and subdue it. And then he repeated himself again. He said, have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and everything that moves on the earth. You have dominion and you have territory. I'm focusing on tonight to occupy. Let's do this. There's so many ways to occupy. I don't have enough time. Every time you walk out of these four walls and you speak Jesus, you're occupying for the kingdom of God. Every time you tell somebody your testimony, what did the Lord do for you? You're occupying for the kingdom of God. Every time you go to the prisons, you're occupying. Every time you go to the nursing home, the old folks, or oh, that's the same thing. Nursing home, every time you go to uh, the homeless shelter, when we go to the petroleum festival, anytime you're out of these walls and you're talking about Jesus, Praise You're God. occupying for the kingdom of God. Tonight, we're going to focus on prayer and supplication and intercession and thanksgiving. Amen. Okay. Praise God. Christianity is not a spectator sport, spiritually speaking. We have got to take a stand. We've got to do something right. to take a stand. There is a war between good and evil, between righteousness and wickedness. Come on. Today is October the 16th. It's a full moon. But beginning of the month or the end of last month, they had a witch walk. They passed right on the streets right here. And at the end of the month, it's Halloween. We need to pray. We need to pray against their wickedness because guess what? They're praying right now. The witches and the warlocks are praying right now against the church and against the people of God. They are trying to advance the kingdom of darkness. We have got to stand up. When I say this, every time I think about occupying, if my arms do like this, it's because I, I envision us all locking arms and like just being a wall and just like coming against the evil one. Like I just see us all just like pushing forward, like just pushing the kingdom of God forward. So if my arms go up, that's why. I just, I just tell you. That. Okay, so anyway, so what we're doing, we're taking back what the enemy stole from us, right? We're taking back the power and authority that the enemy stole from us. Let's go to Luke 19, 
12 to 15. Y'all, listen. Jesus won the victory. The, the war is won. Yes. The victory is done. The war is won. Yeah. But we're going to have some battles that we have to go through in this life. We have to fight, but you need to know that you have victory. You have to claim the victory, and you have to walk in it. Come on. You have to walk in it. All right, Luke 19, 12 to 15. All right, he said, he said, this is Jesus. They thought he had to give this parable because he was telling them that the, the kingdom was, he was going to get a kingdom, or, but they thought the kingdom was coming back immediately. They thought the kingdom was coming right back, but it wasn't. So he, he gave them this parable. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a poor country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. He called his ten servants, and he, deli he delivered them ten pounds, and he said unto them, Occupy till I come. This is the King James Version. The New King James Version says, uh, Do business till I come. Verse 14, But his citizens hated him, and they sent a message after him, saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. And it came to pass that when he returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him to whom, to whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Go back to verse 14. I don't know why Jesus put this in here, but he did. Let's read it. He says, but his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. People, I need you to know, Jesus is coming back. He's coming back, and he's coming back with a kingdom. It doesn't matter who hates him, and it doesn't matter who says that he's not going to reign over him. There is a day coming, and it's called judgment. Every knee is going to bow, and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Atheism is temporary. You're going to bow the knee, and you're going to confess that Jesus is Lord. You need to, you need to accept him on this side of heaven. If you don't accept Jesus Christ on this side... You don't have an option on the other. The door is going to be closed. It's going to be over. The choice has to be made on this side of heaven. Okay, that is, and I want to, you don't have to go here, but in, in verse 27, it does say that, it says that he told them, the, he said, call my enemies, bring my enemies to me. The ones that said that I would not reign, they would, I would not reign over them. He said, and slay them before me. Yeah. Yes. And so now let's talk to the servants. Hello, servants. Hello, children of God. Guess what? We have a judgment day, too. Amen. We have a judgment day, too, and this is what he's going to want to know. He's going to want to know what have you done with what he's given you while he was gone. Come on, come on. Preach it. What have you done with what he's given you while he was gone? In this story, I did not read no more of the story, but in the story, y'all all know it. The one had 10 talents, one had five, one had one. The one with one, he had his. The one with 10 gained 10 more, the one with five gained five more. Okay, you have gifts and you have talents that the Lord has given you. Do not hide your gifts and talents. He's going to want to know what have you done with what he's given you while he was gone. You might have five, you might have 10, you might have one. It doesn't matter. Don't hide your talents. The one that hid his talent, that he was not pleased with him. Matter of fact, he took his talent and gave it to somebody else, the one with 10. Okay, y'all, what have you done? This is going to be the question. What have you done with what he's given you while he was gone? Make no mistake, I'm not talking about a workspace gospel. What I'm talking about right now is taking back what the enemy stole yes. from us. What I'm talking about right now is shutting the mouth of the lions. What I'm talking about right now is pushing the kingdom of God forward and destroying the kingdom of Amen. darkness. What I'm talking about is what 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says. He says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that, the, that, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. When I'm talking about... What I'm talking about is pushing forward the kingdom of God. I'm talking to people who are already saved and welcome aboard. Welcome to the army of God. I'm talking about people who want to work for the kingdom of God. I'm talking about people who are going to push back the kingdom of darkness Amen. in prayer, supplication, intercession, Praise God. and thanksgiving. Praise God. So let's start with prayer. What is prayer? 
And look, most of y'all know it. We've got some some prayer warriors in this place. You know what I mean? But we also got people that was me, like me when I first started. I had no idea how to pray because I'd never seen anybody pray. And so what it is, all we're doing, you're talking to God. It is a it, it's a communication between you and God, but it's a two-way conversation. You talk to him and he talks to you. This is what the word says. He who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide underneath the shadow of the almighty. We have got to dwell in the secret place of the most high. If we want to abide under the shadow of the almighty. I don't know if you, I know everybody, you've seen a shadow. If I stand in the sun and I have a shadow, the closer you are to me, you can stay in my shadow. But the, far, the further you get away, you're going to get out of the shadow. You're going to get out of the shadow of the Almighty the further you get away from God. You've got to stay close. You've got to stay near. And, and you know what? The secret place, your heart, you know, God is with us. He abides in us. We abide in him. But there's something about getting away and getting away from distraction. Jesus did it. Yes. He left his disciples to go away and pray. I think it's Matthew 6.6. 6. He says, go into your, I'm just paraphrasing, go into your room and shut the door. And he says, pray to your father who is in the secret place. He's in the secret place. He's waiting for us to seek him. He's waiting for us to come in and talk to him. Amen. He's waiting for us to talk to him. And we've got to learn how to listen to him yeah. when he speaks. Okay. In this prayer, in this place of prayer, this is the place where you're going to be broken. Thank you. You're going to be broken before the Lord. The Lord... Okay, a broken and contrite spirit he will not despise. Yes. When you come to the end of yourself, he is very happy. Yes. He can work with that. You're gonna you're gonna be broken in the front in, in the in the presence of the Lord, you're gonna be broken. So I'm just it's not religious, it's not, it's gonna be, it's your words. It's your words to him, but I am gonna just pray just for a minute, just so that you can see what I'm talking about. And look, first things first. Repentance, confession, ask for forgiveness. That's first. If you've not done that first, you can't go any further. When you get in prayer, that should be the first thing you're praying for. Lord, forgive me for whatever sin you committed and ask him for forgiveness. That's number one. Number two, we talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and actually encountering Jesus and feeling that his power come upon you. Feeling that if you haven't received that, if you haven't felt that, when you get on your knees, let it be the second thing you ask for. Lord, I need you to encounter me. I need you to come upon me right now. Lord, I need you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. I need you to baptize me. Amen. That's number two. All right. Number three, we're just going to be broken before the Lord. And this is kind of how it sounds like. Oh, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for your presence. Lord, I surrender my life to you, Lord. Lord, if there be any wickedness in my heart, Lord, remove it in the name of Jesus. Lord, right now, Lord, if there are any idols in my life, Lord, show me. Lord, open my eyes so that I can see, so that I can break it down and I can remove them in the name of Jesus, Lord. Oh, Lord, cleanse my hands, purify my heart, purify my mind, Lord. Oh, Lord, use me in the name of Jesus. Yes. Just be broken before the Lord and talk to him and pray to him. Come on. Praise God. That's prayer. Praise God. <sighs> All right. Let's see what we're doing. Good. All right. Good deal. Next one, supplication. I think this is, I don't know if it's my opinion. I don't know what it is. But this is what I think supplication is. It's a fervent, earnest request. It's not begging, but you're binding yourself to the word of God. You're binding yourself to a scripture, to the word of God. Uh, you're going to have to know the word of God. You need to know the word of God to be able to bind yourself. So what you do, you get in the presence of God. It is a passionate, persistent, focused prayer. It is a, I know what my situation looks like, but I know what your word says. Yes. Kind of prayer. Yeah. So it, it's like this. All right. So you would say, you would just start to pray. Now you're just praying. you just going to I'm not giving you any really examples of what's going on, but it would be something like this. Lord, I know what my situation looks like, but you said, and even when I say you said, you can, you can say it is written. But you said, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Lord, I know what it looks like, but you said your grace is sufficient for me. In your strength will be made perfect in my weakness. Yeah. Lord, you said... 
Submit to God, resist the enemy, and he must flee. Yeah. Lord, I'm submitted to you. Lord, make him flee. He has to go. I've submitted to you, Lord. Your word says, submit to God, resist the enemy, and he must flee. I'm resisting the enemy, and he must flee. Your word says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but you deliver him from all of them. Lord. Yeah. This depression, this anxiety, my pain, my suffering, my grief. Lord, you said you would deliver me from all of them. Lord, I'm standing on your word, Lord. I know what it looks like, but I know what your word says, Lord. I trust you, I love you, and I will not be shaken. I'm going to stand yeah. on the word of God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Next one, intercession. Intercession is when we stand in the gap for people. We stand in the gap for people. Some people are called to be intercessors. If you ever meet an intercessor, you will know. They pray constantly. They don't stop praying. If you send them a prayer request, they're going to pray until that problem is resolved. They're gonna, they'll pray for months and months and months on that same one thing. They're going to keep praying. They're going to pray you through. It's good to have some intercessor friends. They can pray you through some things oh, when sure. the enemy yes. is attacking. Yeah. So, yeah. And so everybody is not intercessors. However, if you are a born-again Christian, you are called to intercede. You're called to intercede for your family. You're called to intercede for the people you work with. Your territory. Where's your territory? Your territory is who you can reach. You can reach people I can't reach. I can reach people you can't reach. That's your territory. That's your people. That's who you need to intercede for. When a name pops in your head, pray. That is a, a divine appointment from the Holy Spirit for you to pray for them. I'm going to give you an example. Miss Elaine. I'm going to pray. Just say her name popped up in my head. This is what it would sound like. Oh, Lord, I lift up Miss Elaine to you right now. Lord, I break the hand of the enemy off of her right now, Lord. Lord, I pray complete healing and restoration over her body, Lord. Lord, any attack of the enemy, we break it now, Lord. Right now, she has a heaviness in her heart, Lord. We lift it off of her now in the name of Jesus, Lord. I pray that your love and your peace and your joy should cover her right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. I know there's no distance in the spirit. Lord, touch her right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And then I would probably send her a message and say, hey, sis, I had you on my heart praying for you. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. That's intercession. If you come across an accident, an ex a, a wreck, right? You can start praying. Pray for these people. You might be the only Christian, the only person that can get into the Holy of Holies, the only person that can get into the throne room at that time in that region, in that territory. Start praying for these people. Pray salvation. Pray that the Lord would touch them. Pray for their family. Pray. 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 There is a there is an urgency in the spirit for us to get back to prayer. Yes. Get back in the prayer closet and pray. 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 Our prayers are powerful. Don't let the enemy tell you that your prayers are not powerful. Because he's going to try to tell you that. That's right. Don't. Our prayers are powerful. They can move mountains. Yes. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. All through Scripture, it talks about prayer and supplication. All through Scripture, it talks about prayer and supplication. And I had a whole bunch of Scripture. I'm like, no, I ain't putting all that. But go to uh, Philippians 4.6. We are going to look at this one. Philippians 4.6. It says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. So what do we do when we get anxious? What do we do when anxiety comes? You occupy. You pray. Get on your knees. It says prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known. We may known to God. Yes. You bring it before the Lord. I'm not, I, I don't want, I want you to hear me very clearly. Anxiety is, comes from the root of fear. Somewhere along the line, fear came in. And then it grabbed anxiety, and it probably grabbed some depression with it. I'm not saying that it's not real. It's very real. Anxiety, depression, fear, very real. What I'm saying is it's not from God. The Lord has not given you that. He's not giving you a spirit of fear, but love, 
come power and it's out bond. The enemy is attacking. What do you do when anxiety comes? Get on your knees. Start praying. You can't have gratitude and anxiety at the same time. It doesn't work. If you start praying, gratitude, look, even in, the, I know people, this is what people say, but Lily, you don't know. You don't have anxiety. You, you're right about that. I don't have anxiety. I have Jesus. And whenever he shows up, when the Prince of Peace shows up, anxiety has to flee. Yes. Submit to God, resist the enemy, and he must flee. So yes, maybe I don't understand. Go to verse 7, the next verse. This is what it says. This is right after. This is right after. Make, you, make your request be known to God. It says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. Amen. Through Christ Jesus. Go to verse 8. I'm, not gonna, I'm just going to summarize because I didn't write it all down. Whatever things, this is what you think of. When the anxiety comes, this is what you start praying for. This is what you start thinking about. Things that are true, noble, just, pure, lovely. Things that are a good report. If there's any virtue, virtue. If there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. When anxiety comes, these are the things that you must meditate on. Yes. These are the things of God. These are the things that you must meditate on. Praise God. Why don't we just go one more for the fun of it. Verse 9. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. And the God of peace will be with you. Thank you, Lord. The God of peace will be with you. Praise God. The last one, the last prayer kind of prayer is thanksgiving no matter what you're going through be thankful have an attitude of gratitude you have to be thankful even in the middle of the storm there is always something to, there's always something to be thankful for and his name is Jesus yes, his name is Jesus and what he did for you on the cross is uh, be thankful yes. in Jesus mighty name Okay, so this is the deal. If you're going through life right now and you don't have any warfare, if you're not having any mm. spiritual warfare, Houston, we got a problem. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not having any spiritual warfare, probably two things are going on. Number one, the first thing is that you're not even you're not you're just not recognizing that it's warfare. You're not recognizing the warfare. You just think people are being mean to you or, or this and that. But we don't fight against flesh and blood, right? It's, it's, a, it's a spiritual battle. Um, or even that, or, or you save up your money and something breaks. <laughs> and you save your money back up and something breaks. You save it up again and something breaks. It's an attack. He's coming to kill, steal, and destroy. Whatever he can. Whatever he can get his hand on. Come against him. Stand up and pray and come against him. Yes. When this starts to happen, I want to talk about this too. Uh, Aaron had mentioned his friend on the, the last Wednesday when he when he preached, and he was talking about how he has these intrusive thoughts. I need you to know something. These intrusive thoughts are really bad thoughts. These thoughts are thoughts that are disgusting, and they pop into your head every now and then. You need to know that is a fiery dart of the enemy. Yes. That is a fiery dart of the enemy. You've got to take every thought captive and bring it into submission of God. You have to take every thought captive. Yeah, I know. I do this often. Take every thought captive and bring it under the blood. Okay? If you don't, you're going to start thinking something in you is bad. Like something in you, where did that come from? Where did that thought come from? And then you're going to start looking inside. It is a fiery dart of the enemy. Don't let him fool you. He's coming after your soul. What is your soul? Your mind, your will, and your emotion. That's what he's coming to attack. Take the thought captive and bring it under the blood. Take the thought captive and bring it to God. Bring it to Jesus. Submit it to God. Okay. So that's the intrusive thoughts. If you have done business with the Lord, what a sin that you, you, you committed a sin, you've repented. 
You've taken it to the Lord. You've done business with him. He's forgiven you. You know he forgave He forgave you. You went back and forth. Okay. You know that you're forgiven. Guess what? The enemy's going to try to bring that up to you again. It's going to try to pop back into your head. He's going to tell you you're not forgiven. You must remind him. Take every thought captive. If it's not a thought from God, take it captive. Bring it to God. Put it back into the blood. You have to remind him. No, Satan. My God, I've dealt with this. My God remembers my sin no more. Amen. It's under the blood. Amen. You're going to have to tell him. He's just trying to, to weaken you. He's trying to attack your mind. All right? And if it is, okay, let's, let's just say it is a sin that you haven't dealt with yet. <laughs> Surprise. That's the Holy Spirit. Deal with it. That's right. Come on. Deal with it. Mm -hmm. Deal with your sins. Yes, Lord. Praise God. Okay, next thing. If, if you're not being attacked, the next reason why you might not be being spiritually attacked is because you're not a threat to the kingdom of darkness. You're not doing anything to threaten the devil. If you're not threatening the devil, he's not worried about you. He doesn't care. Doesn't care if you come to church on Sunday and Wednesdays. It's when you start speaking Jesus out of the four walls that he gets nervous. It's when you start going to the prayer closet every day and you get on your knees. Y'all, you need to know something. I want to tell you something. Jesus is the light inside of you. The closer you get to Jesus, the more you spend in prayer, the more you spend, the brighter your light gets. Yeah, come on. This is when people can notice that you'll walk by and they'll be like, something's wrong, something's different with you. Have you been with Jesus? Like, they're gonna see your light shining just from having that intimate relationship with Jesus. Spend time with the Lord. Yes, Lord. Spend time with the Lord. So I just need you to know that when you do find your identity in Jesus Christ, when he tells you what to do and then you start doing it, <laughs> the enemy's going to be mad, mad, mad. But it's okay because Jesus has given us power and authority over all the enemy. Yes. He's given us power and authority in Luke 10, 19. It says, Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and on scorpions and scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy, and nothing, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Jesus has all, all power and all authority, and he lives in you. You've got to get a revelation of this. The same Holy Spirit that was in Jesus yes. is in you. Yes. The same Holy Spirit that he did his ministry, that same... The Holy Spirit didn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes, yes. He's in you. He's working through you. Amen. You have the power and authority through Jesus Christ to fight the enemy. The enemy cannot attack you. He can, he can attack you, but he can't win. Yes. He can't win. You have to just shut him down. Shut him down. Where are we at? Okay. Very good. I'm going to switch gears real quick. Jesus didn't want to die. Y'all know that, right? Jesus did not want to die. He, it was the only way that he, he knew that was the way. It was always the plan. From, from the, the lamb was slain from the foundation of the earth. Yes. It was always the plan. And he wanted to do the will of the Father, but he didn't want to die. Come on. We get like that. Or yes. we like that. In your flesh. Come on. You want to do the will of the Father, but you don't want your flesh to die. Preaching. Oh, let's go to that scripture. You're going to have to die, people. Right. You're going to have to die to your flesh if you want to live for Christ. Amen. You're going to have to die to your flesh if you want to live for Christ. Um, go to Luke 22, 39 to 46. And I'm just going to read this. For whoever desires to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. You're going to have to die to find it, to find your life. All right, Luke 22 to 46. Y'all, he didn't want to die. He was in so much agony, he was sweating blood. So much mental stress, so much mental anguish, he was sweating blood. Come on. Just thinking about what he was about to go through. Let's read it. Oh, sweet Jesus. 22 to 39, uh, Luke 22, verse 39 to 46. Coming out, he went to the mount. I'm in New King James Version. Sweet Jesus. 39, it says, Coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives, as he was accustomed, and his disciples followed him. When he came to the place, he said to them, Listen to this, pray, 
that you may not enter into temptation. Verse 41. And he was withdrawn, he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throat, and he knelt down and he prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. He didn't want to die. But his next words was, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. You're going to have to get to a place where you die to your flesh, and you're going to have to say, Lord, not my will, but yours yeah. be done. Yes. He had to. We have to. Verse 43. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then he sweat. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Look at that. Just look at the part about and being in agony. He was in agony. He was sweating blood. What did he do? He prayed more earnestly. Praise God. He didn't stop praying. He pushed harder. He put when the enemy is attacking, push harder. Yes. Don't back down. Don't back up. Push forward. Yes. Push harder when the enemy is coming. And get you some backup. Get you some backup. You've got some praying people in this church. Reach out. Call somebody. Let them pray with you. Where two or three are gathered, he's there in the midst. Let them pray with you. Let them pray you through this stuff. Yes, Lord. Praise God. Verse number 45. When he rose up from prayer, he had come to his disciples, and he found them sleeping from sorrow. Then he said to them, I'm going to say it how I think he said it. Then he said to them, why are you sleeping? Rise and pray, lest you fall into temptation. Come on. Are we sleeping? Mm. Are we sleeping in, on prayer? Are we sleeping on prayer? Next question. Are you falling into the same temptation you've already, you've repented, turned from, but yet you're falling into the same temptation every week, every two weeks, every month? Come on. I'm not talking sinless perfection. It's not what I'm talking. We're all going to fall short of the glory of God. I'm saying, what are you? What do you do when you continue to fall into that same temptation? Get on your knees and pray. Pray lest you fall into temptation. Is what he said. Pray. Cry out to the Lord. Cry out to the Lord. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but he delivers us from all of them. Yes. You've got to believe the word of God. You've got to believe that he can deliver you and he can set you free from any temptation. He always gives us a way out. It's what the word says. Yes. Find the way out. Find the way out. Find that way out. Again, our prayers are very powerful. The gates of hell shall not prevail against Praise us. God. We have the power, what we bound on earth, what we bind on earth is bound in heaven. What we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. We have the power against the enemy. We've got to learn how to use it. He has given us gifts. He's given us weapons. He wouldn't have gave us weapons if we didn't have to use them. He wouldn't have gave us the, the armor of God if we didn't need to use it. Come on. On this side. Our weapons are not carnal but mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. We have weapons. Yeah. We have weapons. I'm, I'm wrapping it up right now. If, um, whatever. We're almost done. Okay, listen up. When your kids go astray, when your marriage is in shambles, when your finances are lacking, when your school is going downhill with the demonic agenda that they have, and when your mind is constantly being attacked with intrusive thoughts, it's time to occupy. It's time to stand up and face the, face the music. I don't want to say that. It's time to stand up and face the enemy. It's time to let him know where you are. Lord, I see, my, I see where I'm at. I see my situation. But I know what your word says. Yeah. Satan, the Lord rebuke you, and I'm here to put you on notice. You're not going to have my family. You're not going to have my kids. You're not going to have my husband. You're not going to have my marriage. You're not going to have my joy. You're not going to have my love. You're not going to have my peace. 
You're not going to have my faith, and you sure can't have my fire. Come on. Every demonic assignment on my life, I cancel it now in the name of Jesus. Any demonic assignment over this church, I break it now in the name of Jesus. Any witch or warlock that come within three feet of me, I render them powerless in the name of Jesus. Any witchcraft, I break it now. Any spirit related to witchcraft, rebellion, intimidation, domination, manipulation, control, I break it now in the name of Amen. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, right now, I just ask y'all, if y'all need a healing in your body, be ready to receive a healing. Amen. If you need the Lord to touch you, whatever you need, the altars are open if you do want to come. But anything that you need, the Lord can do which you sitting in your seat. But he does honor faith. Yeah. And people who step out in faith, he respects that and he honors that. But right now, Lord, I just ask that you would loose your healing power in this room right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Anybody who needs a healing in their body, Lord, touch them now. Yes. Touch now. Any heart disease, be healed right now in the name of Jesus. High blood pressure, come down. Low blood pressure, Go up. High cholesterol, regulate right yes. now in the name of Jesus. Blood sugar, get right in the name of Jesus. All arthritis, go in Jesus' name. All pain, pain in the back, pain in the knees, the elbows, yes. anywhere right now. Amen. All pain to go in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Lord, you said if any among you are sick. Come to the elders, call for the elders of the church. Let them yeah. anoint you with all and pray, and you shall be made whole. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Right now, Hallelujah. anybody that needs anything, yeah. ask the Lord. The power of the Lord is in this room. The Spirit of God is in this room. Lord, I thank you for your presence right now in this room, Lord. I thank you for going before me, Lord. I, I thank you for the message that you gave us, Lord. Lord, we give you all honor, all praise, and all glory, Lord. We worship you with everything that we have. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.